Hello, and welcome to the Web Search and Global Marketing News Bulletin. I'm Dana Damakis, and here are today's top stories. A Canadian court ruling on Google blocking has brought up questions about freedom of speech. The US is leading the way with voice technology use, and WeChat is to increase monetization potential for content producers on its platform. The Canadian Supreme Court has ruled that the country now has the ability to force Google to remove search results worldwide. The court case began after the Canadian company Datalink was found in 2012 to have stolen details of a product from a manufacturing company, which led to Datalink's website subsequently being removed from Canadian Google search result pages. However, the court has stated that since people could still buy from Datalink internationally because the internet has no borders, the only way to ensure that the injunction works is to have it apply where Google operates globally. Google has responded by saying that the move threatens freedom of expression, something which should have meant the order was never issued. A spokesman for Open Media, a Canadian group campaigning for open communications, has also opposed the ruling, saying that it creates a risk that governments and commercial entities will see this ruling as justifying censorship requests that could result in perfectly legal content being removed from the web entirely. Google cannot appeal the ruling and so is forced to comply with the decision. The only way it can repeal the order is to be able to prove to the Canadian Supreme Court that by following the instruction, Google will be violating the laws of another country. The US has been found to be the country with the highest average usage of voice technology. A study into smartphone users by GWT and Mindshare Futures discovered that 49% of US respondents use their voice assistants on a weekly basis compared to a 31% global average. The study also found evidence that international users have not had positive experiences with the technology, with nearly one in five people saying they had only used it once or twice, compared to one in 10 in the US. US users were also more likely to use voice assistants to complete online searches, check the weather and find a local business. In order to take advantage of such high numbers in the US, brands such as L'Oreal are investing in the technology. The company estimates that by the end of 2018, 20% of all searches will be through voice search, adding that Amazon Alexa represents an interesting opportunity that it plans to be at the forefront of. WeChat has announced that it plans to increase the number of ads in user-generated articles posted on its platform. The plans have been developed to help ensure high quality content and involve making the ad space at the bottom of all articles bigger in order to host more ads for authors. Currently, users with subscription accounts can only monetize their content using the voluntary tip option for authors, alongside a much smaller advertising space. This increase in advertising space means that users posting original content will be able to get higher returns on the platform. WeChat has also assured users that it will help protect their copyrights in order to ensure that the increased returns cannot be manipulated. The Swiss clothing brand Strelson has announced that it is to begin selling its products in return for Facebook likes. The like shop is part of the company's main website, but the items cannot be bought with currency. In order to buy an item, a user must share the piece of clothing on Facebook with a personalized message, and if a specified number of likes is surpassed, the item will be sent out to them. Currently, there are 14 items included in the shop, with a polo shirt costing 50 likes and a leather jacket costing 500 likes. The agency behind the campaign says that it is intended to achieve a viral effect using like requests and post sharing to broaden the community and brand recognition. And finally, Amazon has patented a construction to house delivery drones. Described as a beehive-like structure, it will contain multi-level individual spaces for drones to fly from, on top of a traditional ground-level loading port and customer entry point for self-service collections. 
Amazon says that it has been designed to enable the company to move its warehouse from the outskirts of metropolitan areas to more inner city locations. That's all from me today, thanks for joining us and be sure to check out our Ketchup TV service to access our full database of in-depth interviews with global digital marketing professionals, news, how-to videos and more. See you next time.